The state of the nation is a conversation that continues to linger as Nigerians from across the country are lamenting the hardships in the land, crying out for urgent measures by the government at all levels to mitigate their suffering, which they said was becoming intolerable. On one hand, Nigeria's inflation rate rose to its highest in more than 27 years in December as food prices surged, exacerbating a cost-of-living crisis and piling more pressure on the central bank to raise interest rates. While on the other hand, in case of insecurity, it's causing sleepless nights for citizens as we've witnessed a new surge of kidnappings in the country. In the north, the Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria, SCSN, on Tuesday provoked a fresh controversy on the Muslim Muslim ticket of the All Progressives Congress APC for the 2023 election, which it said has fallen short of expectations. According to the organization, the same faith ticket adopted by President Bola Tinubu to emerge victorious in the last general election has not brought any positive changes to the lives of Nigerians. Joining us on the show this morning as we take a look at the state of the nation is Dr. Salihu Lukman, former vice chairman of the All Progressives Congress in the Northwest. Welcome to the morning show, Dr. Lukman. Thank you very much. I keep correcting this. I'm not doctor. I'm simply Salihu Lukman. Please. All right. Welcome to the morning show, Mr. Salihu Lukman. Let's go straight into the conversation. Um, I just talked about some of the challenges and the hardships faced by Nigerians and even a, co a complaint by the Supreme Council of Sharia in Nigeria. They're saying that they regret or almost as if supporting the, pres the um, same faith ticket uh, on which the president rolled on. What do you think are some of the things that they mean when they say that they are not enjoying the benefits or that this administration has fallen short of expectations? especially in the context of the, of the um, SCSN? Okay. Well, first, I think it's a, not a new, a new thing altogether. You know, uh, it's a reflection of the general prostration in the country. And I think the reality that the, the government is set to open itself up for engagement by citizens, and I think what the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, uh, Sharia Affairs were simply saying was that they are unable to connect to the government. And I think this is not unexpected if that is the case. And uh, I think the president responded very well by holding a meeting with them yesterday. And I hope it won't just end like that. I think generally my view, which has been my advocacy, is that as a party and as a government in power now, uh, we need to really come back to the original vision of the party, which is about being a progressive party managing a progressive government. Rather than being defensive and wait until people complain, I think the party and the government should be able to keep everyone busy. For instance, the issue of insecurity you raise, which is a worrisome development. Before, everybody thought Abuja is safe. Now, increasingly, it's turning out to be not the case. Abuja is just like any other part of the country. It's also not safe. Uh, and you can, you can trace the problem to the mere fact that there are so many ungoverned spaces in the country. Largely because Nigeria is one of the most under police countries. Uh, and it's a conversation that we've been having for more than two decades now about whether we should reform the police in a way that will empower the state to have state police. And as a party, we have all the agreement internally within the party that the RFI true federalism report, uh, committee report, which has made all the necessary recommendations, including all the uh, reform, legislative reform that is required to achieve that. The second, the other issue is the fact that, and we keep raising the point, the economy is on the downward uh, swing. And it's all about the question of creating more opportunities in the country so that the country is able to earn, the government is able to earn more revenue. Now, from the beginning of this administration, subsidy on petroleum product is gone. Expectedly, 
we are supposed to have more savings from what used to be paid on subsidy. Now, this is where the government should not be re uh, reactive. We sh should be pro proactive. If there are savings already being made, we can deploy the resources being saved from the revenue uh, that used to be uh, expended on subsidy uh, and begin to deploy it in terms of how do we reform the police to recruit, not just the police, all the armed forces to recruit more personnel. Uh, how do we channel those resources? I hear um, uh, the retired police officer, police commissioner, a lobby in the previous segment. Okay complaining about uh, welfare of police. Mr. Yeah, Salihur, all this need to happen. Uh, just to interject, as you're uh, discussing the reforms, uh, you, you know, you ref made reference earlier to the fact that, of course, it, this administration is a listening administration, is responding to, to, to people, and we see the reforms. However, what are your takes on the implementation? Because it's not just about reform, but how they are achieved. Are you satisfied with the implementation of the various reforms? And secondly, how much patience in your books is realistic uh, to be expected from the nation as we await to start to enjoy the projected, uh, the hopeful benefits of these reforms? No, sincerely speaking, I, I, I think the government need to do much more. Um, in terms of whether we are satisfied, I will be honest, I don't think Nigerians are satisfied pace of the reform is too slow, and I think that is why I made the point earlier on about the government need to be, need to open itself up and become more proactive, keep everybody busy, you know, let everyone be involved rather than just uh, almost moving on the slow pace we are now. So. I will be honest to say that the first is uh, we are uh, it's still very slow and a lot more need to happen and sincerely speaking this is why we have to keep talking to my I mean I rather than uh, allow a situation where we get frustrated at right of the government the government is just starting now I think what Nigerians need to do is to do everything possible to engage the government in such a way that they succeed. Because if the government don't succeed, we the citizens, we are going to be at the receiving end. But if the government succeed, it will be the better for all of us. Okay, I would like to hear your take on number one, these allegations of corruption. Past just six months, we're hearing humanitarian ministry. Uh, we're also hearing about a circular that was released as regards the chief of staff, you know, putting a signature to some COVID-19 money. And then there's just been a litany of woes. We're also hearing the ALCC chief saying that some of his investigators collect money uh, from people that they're investigating. We're also hearing cases and cases of kidnapping insecurity around the Buari area. Till now, we've not been able to release those as a country. I mean, generally, a lot of people say this government is failing by the day and the expectations are very bleak this time around. What say you on all of these matters? Well, uh, frankly speaking, I, earlier this week I wrote a piece uh, referring to this whole issue uh, based on the analysis of uh, prebendal <laughs> politics. And if you recall, I think it is also earlier this week, Mr. Simon Kolaole in his piece talked about the audacity of impunity. You know, So these are not new, new things altogether. And my take is that uh, all these are happening because in a way, as a party, uh, we fell short of our commitment to fight corruption from the time of the Board Hari administration to now. But good enough, uh, even the way the president responded by sacking the, I mean, not sacking, by suspending the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and also sacking, I think, the DG of uh, Social Investment Program. Uh, it's, it's a different approach from what we had under former President Buhari, and which give confidence that it's not going to be business as usual. Um, and sincerely speaking, coming back to the piece by Mr. Simon Kolaole, he made the point about the, some of the 
wrong expectation that uh, people imagine, including people appointees of government, imagine that it's going to be business as usual, public officers can do what they wish. That is why they hit the ground running by doing some of the things. Now, the action of President Aswaju Bolaya Metunubu demonstrated that they are completely wrong and we have to keep uh, the tempo on. We have to keep the pressure to ensure that you continue on that trajectory. Because look, 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 sincerely speaking, it's really, really heartbreaking when you hear the kind of money that is being <coughs> uh, mismanaged or stolen, you know. And unless we put a stop to this, the whole question of democracy producing development is not going to happen. Okay. All right. Uh, let's say a very big thank you to you for your time, uh, uh, Mr. Salih. Look for the. Uh,